everyone and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video I am doing five top tips to help you get started with running. These are things that I did myself in the beginning and if you're new to my channel my name is Katie and I would love it for you to subscribe if you haven't already done so. This is a very new type of video for me. I asked on a previous video what type of things people would like to see from me and quite a lot of people said running and I might talk about my running history like properly in another video but just to give you a very quick breakdown. I have recently got back into running again. I've probably been running like properly for about a month but before that I used to run in between my middle daughter and my son. So this would be like three, well three and a half years ago now, something like that and I got really into running. I ran races, I ran up to half marathons. I think I did three half marathons in total and I went from not being able to even run and walk half a mile to running half marathons. So I might talk a little bit more about my running history in another video if you would like to see it. I have actually got some really good ideas for running videos in the future if you like this kind of thing but for now I'm just going to get started and I'm going to tell you my five top tips for starting running. So my first tip is really simple but it's definitely worth mentioning and that is just go for it. In the beginning I found that I was putting up so many different barriers not to exercise. I'd say things like oh the kids have got a really busy week so I'll start next week or I would say oh I'm just gonna have a weekend because we're going out for dinner or we're getting a takeaway and I'll just really enjoy all the food and then I'll start next week or I don't have like the right exercise clothes and I put up so many different barriers and the truth is you just need to just go and it's not going to be easy in the beginning. You'll probably find that you won't be able to run very far and that is okay. Even if you go out and walk for a while and then just do a little bit of running, even if it's just 10 meters, you've gone out there, you've been active, you've used your legs and I just think that's the thing to remember. Like you're not going to instantly be like Mo Farah and running marathons and things. Nobody is like that and I think the thing is just to get out there. The beauty of running is that you can do it absolutely anywhere. So you don't have to get in the car and go somewhere unless you want to go anywhere like different. You can just literally get out your front door and you can go and the beauty of it is in the beginning when you're not going to be able to run that far it doesn't take up a huge amount of time and I know everybody's circumstances are different and some people might not have like partners at home and things but even if you just get out there for 10 minutes or take the kids out with you for 10 minutes and just go walking and maybe run a little bit of the way at least you're getting out there and doing it and I know in the beginning as well especially the first time around I was really worried what people would think of me as I was running down like in my town like looking like a sweaty mess nobody is looking at you nobody's looking at your wobbly bits running nobody's looking at the way you're running nobody's looking at all and if they are they're probably just looking and thinking oh well done I wish I could get out for a run nobody's looking at you so honestly I think the best thing that you can do is just to go for it and in terms of like things that I did in the beginning I know that there are loads of apps out there at the moment which kind of help you when you are a beginner I know that the massive one is Couch to 5K. I've heard so many people rave about this and how good it is. I have never used Couch to 5K or anything like that, but I think I pretty much did my own variation of that. In the beginning, I went out three times a week and I just ran and walked. So I walked a little bit of the way, I ran a little bit of the way, sometimes I would do a mile, sometimes I would go up to about 5K and I would just walk, run, mostly walk, sometimes run and you definitely find that your fitness increases over time and you slowly start to kind of notice that your fitness levels change and things and so yeah my number one tip starting off is just to go for it. So my second tip is to record your runs. Now you might be somebody that just likes to get out there, you don't care how far you've gone, you don't care like what time you've done and that is absolutely fine but I know for me in the beginning and still now definitely one of the biggest motivators for me was recording my times and you can do this in a variety of different ways which I will talk a little bit about in a second but I just found that this was a really good motivator. I am quite a competitive person mainly with myself and I found that I really got a buzz from trying to beat my own times, beat the distances I've done and in turn it really motivated me and 
you know, if I was running and I could see that I was quite close to my like personal best, then I'd push myself a little bit harder or I'd push the distance a little bit more. And I just found that it really worked for me. And there are a number of different ways that you can record your runs. Obviously, you can use some sort of fitness watch. I have currently got an Apple Watch. I've had this one a few years. This is one of the like second generation ones. And it's pretty good. Like I didn't buy it necessarily for exercise, but I do find that it's okay for running. I don't think it's one of the best for actually for running, but it does the job and it suits me just fine. I definitely recommend investing in some sort of watch, but you don't need to do that yet because that's if you kind of like running and you want to stick with it. There is no point in going out and spending money on anything like this in the beginning because you just don't know if you are going to stick with it. So another really good way in which you can record your runs is on your phone. And there are so many different running apps in which you can record your runs. I am gonna talk about two just because they are the ones I know and that is Strava and Nike Running Club. So when I used to run previously, I used to use Nike Running Club and I really liked it. I love Nike as a brand and I just used to quite like it. It had like celebrities sort of cheering you on. It's really simple. It's really good to use. It's like quite a cool interface. You can get it on a Apple Watch and you can also get it on your phone and you can just run with it and it's pretty good. It also tells you in your ear like how far you're going and how um what your average pace is and things when you hit certain points. And it does the whole other stuff like telling you like if you've hit your 5K personal best or whatever. So I use Nike for the like pretty much the whole time I run last time. But then this time I have been using Strava and I really like Strava. I'm loving it at the moment. The reason I switched to that one is because my husband uses Strava for like cycling and things. And so far I think I'm probably enjoying that one more than the Nike one, just because Strava has like a really like cool community feel to it. You can follow other people, you can give them kudos, which is basically like liking their runs. You can do all the things that Nike does, like you can add a photo after your run you can share it to social media if you want to but I think it just gives you a little bit more detail than Nike you can go in and look at obviously all the different things like your pace and your elevation and what I love about Strava is you can go in and actually look at different segments and people have obviously named these segments and you can go on and you can see how fast you were at different segments of your run and you can also see how you compare on a leaderboard to other people that have run that route as well so you can really just go so far into it and you can see so many different things you can also do challenges and stuff which I haven't really got into yet but just on the whole I genuinely like really am loving Strava at the moment So my third tip is all about gear and I think the beauty of running is that it's pretty accessible to a wide group of people. As long as you've got an okay pair of trainers and some suitable exercise clothes then you're pretty much good to go. But if you've been doing it a while you might want to start investing in some things that are like related to running. There is so many different gear gadgets, all sorts of things that you can buy related to running. But I'm gonna talk about a few that I sort of really recommend and that I use quite a lot. So firstly, in terms of exercise clothes, again, you can get these in all sorts of budgets from things from Primark or the supermarkets up to like spending hundreds of pounds on like trousers or tops or sports bras or whatever. I have always really rated F and F at Tesco for exercise gear. But as I'm talking, I'm gonna flash up some things that I've just looked at online. I've tried to find stuff from all different budgets as well. But I have always really liked f and I used them for years and years and they were great. I ran half marathons in Tesco's like leggings and things and they were fab. I have actually since then worked with Tesco's on like their exercise range and I still think they're great. Like obviously none of this video is an ad but I thought I'd better mention that. And yeah, they're pretty good. I have also really recently, which I was so honored to, worked for um, Next and Adidas on a like sort of campaign. And again, I'm loving the Adidas stuff they sent me. It's a little bit more money, but you can really like tell it's really nice. They've got some really stylish stuff. You're gonna need in the beginning a good pair of like leggings or shorts. You're gonna need a good sports bra. I mean, my. My puppies aren't very ample, but I still need a good sports bra because it still hurts even if you're of the uh, less 
ample bosom range. So you definitely need to invest in a good sports bra. My sports bra is from, I've actually got one from Tesco's and one from Next, and they both do the job. I prefer them with a little bit of padding for the reasons that I just said. And then you're gonna need some sort of top, maybe some sort of lightweight jacket for winter, but pretty much that's all you really need, like clothes-wise. You can go crazy, but that's pretty much all you need. The biggest thing gear-wise, if you start to get more serious about running than that I could recommend is a good pair of trainers. So I ran in the beginning just in a really average pair of trainers that I'd had for years and they did the job fine but I was starting to notice that I had knee pain. I ended up, this was the previous time that I ran, not recently, I went to a physio and they basically just said that firstly I was doing too much too soon. That is another thing that I should stress don't try and do too much too soon. Just go out and take it easy and don't try and build up your distance or your speed too quickly because you will get knee pain. And they recommended that I go and get my gait analyzed. So getting your gait analyzed, there are loads of different shops that do it. Just Google like specific running shops. And what you do is you run on the treadmill for like not even very long. So don't worry about like looking silly. I think you run for about 20 seconds and they will video you and they will look at your gait and the way in which you run. And with me, I can't exactly remember, but I think my one of my feet turned in as I was running basically. So basically they said that I needed a more stable shoe and that is what I got. So I have had these years and years. These are, I don't even know what they are. Sacconi Guide Sevens or Sacconi. I mean, look at them, they are so tatty. And I am actually gonna have to replace these soon because look at them. But they are more of a stable shoe, which means they just give you a little bit more stability as you run. So I would say that in the beginning, just running whatever you've got, but then after a while, if you find that you're getting more serious about it, I would definitely go and look at your trainers. I think these cost me about 120 pounds, something like that a few years ago, so they were an investment. But also definitely check your gait because my husband has a neutral gait, which means that he can pretty much wear anything when he runs. So you might not necessarily need to splash out on things as expensive as this. So just go and have it look and have it checked. Then the rest of the gear, I've already talked about a running watch. You can also invest in a pair of headphones, especially if you like listening to music or you like listening to podcasts as you run. I got these from John, my husband, probably about three years ago now for my birthday. So this model probably doesn't exist anymore. But these are the Power Beats. They are um, wireless. So they're pretty good. They were expensive as well. I'm also going to flash up some headphones that I found. Obviously, I don't know kind of whether these are any good or not, but I'll flash up some that are differing budgets because again, you know, if you're not going to stick to it, you don't want to spend a lot of money on headphones. So you could even just use the ones that came with your phone or anything like that as well. I know that if you run races, because I haven't run a race for a fair few years, I think the rules have changed a little bit now and you do need ones that sit on the outside of your ear if you're going to run and listen to music while you race. So that's another thing to think about as well. But definitely a good pair of headphones because I can not run without listening to music. Likewise, if you want to carry your phone around with you, which I definitely would as well from a security point of view, it's good to have your phone on you, then you could also invest in one of these. So this one is from a brand called Jimash. Jimash. I think I got it for about $9.99 on Amazon or eBay or something like that. And I have got a big phone, so it does look a bit random stuck there. So sometimes I will just hold it depending on how I feel. But these are really good if you want to run with your phone and you don't want to be holding it. So I would definitely recommend something like that as well. I will try and link to all these below if I can. But like I said, in the beginning, just go out and run and then you can decide on whether you need this gear if you've been doing it a while. Tip number four is to go to your local park run. If you haven't heard of park run before, they are free weekly five kilometer timed runs and they're done all over the country. And I mean literally everywhere. They're done all over the world actually. And they are such a good motivator to help you run. And just to give you a quick idea about what happens, you sign up to park run and then you can find out where your local one is. And basically you have to print off a barcode which has like your dedicated number on it. You go along 
along. It is such an amazing community atmosphere. Like it really is. I cannot stress enough what a brilliant community atmosphere it is and you'll go along you'll listen to a talk and it's just such a nice kind of camaraderie as well and then you basically run you keep a hold of your barcode then once you finish the run at the end of it you get a chip and then basically on, they buddy. scan that chip and then they will later email you with your time and on. you get to see the results of the whole race and like how you did in your age group and things like I said it's all completely free but it is so such a good motivator and it's just such a nice way to get involved in your local community as well it just really is good fun and you really do not need to be worried about like you know if you're not running completely 5k yet it doesn't matter there are people who walk the whole way around there are people with dogs there are people with buggies there are people doing it for good causes there are people who literally take ages to get around but nobody cares they like to say that it's not a race, it's a run. And yes, you can be a little bit competitive with yourself and try and beat your times and things. But on the whole, it's just a really nice motivator because everybody has got a love of running. It's all volunteer led. So you can even volunteer in the future to be part of it and sort of marshal it and things. But it's just such a nice way of getting in, like involved in your local community and stuff. And I really recommend it. So tip number five and my final tip is to just get involved when it comes to running and what I mean by that is there are so many different things that you can do. Running is such a huge thing. So you can join a running club. I am desperate to go and join my local running club but I haven't quite worked up the courage yet. I'm just a little bit of a wimp about meeting new people and stuff but it's definitely going to happen. I am going to psych myself up and go and there are local running clubs everywhere so definitely check out your local one. If you don't want to commit to some Something like that because it is a commitment on your time as well why not do something like join a virtual running club I don't know a huge amount about this but I know that there is a big virtual running club called lonely goat and they've even got their own like uniform and like stuff now another thing that I really like to do with running is to sign up to races to motivate myself so I've already signed up to a couple of races even though I've only been running for a short time again just because I find it gives me something to work towards and you don't have to do things like half marathons or anything like that there are loads of local like five kilometer races or 10k races and there's all sorts of different things going on there's a website called I think it's called findmyrace.com where you can find all the different races in your areas there's also really fun like races as well they don't have to be serious there's all sorts of like fun runs and bubble runs and obstacle runs and different things like that but I definitely think it's worth signing up to some races to keep you motivated as well and that is it that is all my like five top tips for starting running I really hope that you enjoyed this video it was a little bit different for me but I still hope that you enjoyed it anyway do leave me a comment below and let me know if you run or if you're considering running or any other tips if you're a seasoned runner that you can give me as well and I think I am going to do some more running videos in the future because it's just something that I'm loving at the moment and I'd really like to talk more about things that I'm kind of passionate about so expect some more running videos in the future and thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye! I'm not going to run like super fast. Yep, yeah, come on, go. <laughs>